United Kingdom, a land of prosperity and abundance, if you're one of the lucky few living in the right postcode. Despite its reputation for wealth and success, the UK is home to many struggling communities who just can't seem to catch a break. But don't worry, folks. We're here to take a closer look at the top 10 poorest cities in the UK, based on disposable income. Yes, you heard that right. We're going to be diving deep into the grim realities of just how broke these cities are, and why they can't seem to shake off the shackles of economic hardship. So grab your popcorn, and get ready to witness, the financial equivalent of a demolition derby, as we explore the reasons why these cities are struggling, and the impact this has on the people who live there. Leicester, the jewel of the East Midlands is the 10th poorest city in the UK. With a paltry £726 a month in disposable income, it's no wonder the residents are feeling the pinch. And with an average monthly net income of just £1,724, it's a miracle they can afford to buy anything other than baked beans and ramen noodles. Leicester is no stranger to adversity. This is a city that knows how to take a hit and keep on ticking. Whether it's the cost of living crisis or the fact that most of the population works in the textile industry and lives in single rooms, Leicester has faced it all with stoic resilience. Leicester has a significant number of households residing in social rented accommodations. Additionally, a relatively high percentage of residents are from ethnic minority backgrounds and face additional obstacles in securing higher paying jobs. Unfortunately, this can result in them being more likely to work in lower paid sectors of the economy and struggle to make ends meet. Yes, Leicester may be poor, but it's also proud. Proud of its ability to defy the odds and soldier on in the face of adversity. Soaring prices may be driving many into poverty, but at least they can take comfort in the fact that they're not alone. After all, misery loves company. Newport is the city that's seen better days. Once a major hub for coal mining, steel production, and manufacturing, it's now the most deprived authority in Wales. But hey, at least they're number one at something, right? With a poverty rate of 31%, it's like every third person you meet in Newport is living in poverty. And let's not forget about the kids, more than one in three children are growing up in poverty. It's like the Hunger Games, but without any of the glamour or excitement. Of course, this has disastrous implications for young people, their families, and their futures across Wales. But hey, at least they can take solace in the fact that, they have the ninth lowest average net monthly income in the UK. It's like the Olympics, but for poverty. So let's all raise a glass to Newport, a city that may be down, but it's definitely not out. Oxford, the city of dreaming spires and overpriced housing. It's home to one of the world's most prestigious universities, but that doesn't mean everyone's rolling in cash. In fact, poverty and inequality are still very much alive and well in the city. With a whopping 26% of children living below the poverty line, it's like a quarter of the city is living in some kind of twisted Dickensian nightmare. 20 to 34 year olds, who make up 30% of the population and are mostly students or lower paid workers. It's like they're stuck in a perpetual state of financial limbo, where the only thing more expensive than the rent is, the cost of their study. Oxford has the fourth highest cost of living in the UK. It's like the city is trying to compete with London for the title of most unaffordable place to live. Bath. The city of Roman baths, Georgian architecture, and low disposable income. That's right, folks. Despite its posh reputation, Bath has managed to snag the seventh lowest average disposable income in the whole of the UK. How did this happen? Well, let's take a closer look. Firstly, Bath has the second highest cost of living in the country, beaten only by its big sister, London. 
Tourists flock to the city, driving up the prices of housing and other expenses. Secondly, the types of jobs available in Bath don't exactly scream high-paying. You'll find a lot of service industry jobs here, like retail, hospitality, and tourism. Not exactly the kind of work that leads to a bulging bank account. And lastly, there's the fact that Bath is a relatively small city. Sure, it's a beautiful city, but it's also not exactly a hub of economic activity. So, if you're looking for a place to settle down and make your fortune, Bath may not be the city for you. Preston, the city that's just a hop, skip and a jump away from economic prosperity. With a poverty rate of 26%, it seems like the residents are jumping through hoops just to make ends meet. And let's not forget about the limited job opportunities, which are as rare as a sunny day in Manchester. It's no surprise that Preston ranks fifth in the lowest average monthly income. It's like they're giving out pennies instead of pounds. But wait, there's more. The city also has a relatively low level of educational attainment. It's like they're trying to outdo their neighboring cities in the race to the bottom. With only 28% of the population having a degree or higher qualifications, it's no wonder that the job prospects are as bleak as a rainy day in Blackpool. And what's with all the low-wage jobs in retail and hospitality? Is Preston trying to be the bargain basement of Lancashire? Overall, it seems like Preston is the city that's stuck in the past with economic challenges that are as old as the steam train at the Ribble Steam Railway. York. The city of cobbled streets, stunning architecture, and medieval walls. But let's be real, if you're not rolling in dough, you might want to steer clear of this place. With the sixth highest cost of living in the UK, York is like a luxury car that only the wealthy can afford to drive. The price of living in a place with well-preserved medieval walls and famous landmarks like York Minster and the Jorvik Viking Centre is not cheap. And if you thought living in York was expensive, just wait until you try to feed your family. Nearly 22% of the population lives below the poverty line. End child poverty even reports that nearly 26% of children in the York Central constituency live in poverty. So, while the wealthy Yorkies are sipping on their fancy cocktails and enjoying the vibrant city life, the poor folks are struggling to make ends meet. Manchester, the city that never sleeps, because everyone's too busy working multiple jobs just to afford the cost of living. With a measly £660 monthly disposable income, you might as well be throwing your money into the river or well. And don't even get me started on the government's leveling up agenda. It's as effective as trying to level a hill with a teaspoon. Child poverty rates in Greater Manchester are through the roof, with some boroughs hitting a heart-stopping 30%. At this rate, we'll have to start renaming it Starvation City. But hey, at least the cost of living crisis is deepening, because who doesn't love struggling to put food on the table while inflation skyrockets? And let's not forget about the overall life expectancy gap, why live longer when you can live harder? All in all, Manchester is the perfect place to live if you enjoy the constant stress of financial instability and a general feeling of despair. Plymouth is a city located in the southwest of England, known for its historic naval heritage, beautiful coastline, and vibrant cultural scene. Unfortunately, the seagulls of poverty are swooping in to steal the fish of better job opportunities and the chips of higher wages, leaving many residents struggling to make ends meet. This pervasive force has led to pockets of poverty, deprivation, and poor housing in the city, as well as lower educational outcomes and life expectancy. It's no surprise that more than 11,000 children in Plymouth are living in poverty, with some wards experiencing poverty levels in excess of 35%. Despite a diverse economy, 
that includes marine and maritime industries, tourism, healthcare, education, and advanced manufacturing. Plymouth has the third lowest average monthly income in the UK, and its neighborhoods are among the poorest 4% in England. Brighton and Hove, or as it's affectionately known, London-on-Sea, is a city located on the south coast of England that has it all, vibrant culture, exciting nightlife, and a seaside location that's sure to make your wallet scream. Speaking of screaming, Brighton and Hove is on the verge of a poverty bomb. That's right, one in seven children in Brighton and Hove live in poverty. Nearly 6,244 children in city were living in relative poverty in the year ending April 2022. The report highlights an 82% increase in the number of city households unemployed and are on universal credit since the pandemic, sounds like the economy is really booming. For those in the deepest poverty, the outlook for this winter is incredibly bleak. In Brighton and Hove, 28% of all households are in privately rented accommodation, and with a 10% rise in rent, it's only a matter of time before everyone is living in a cardboard box on the beach. And if that doesn't sound like the life for you, keep in mind that the city reported a monthly cost of £1,481 to live, making it the third highest cost of living in the UK. But don't worry, you'll still have a whopping £602 of disposable income left over to spend on the essentials like bread and water. Nottingham is famous for its association with the legendary outlaw Robin Hood. Yes, that's right, the guy who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Except, in our case, we seem to have missed the part about giving to the poor. Oops, our bad. Nottingham, once known for its thriving lace-making, textile industries, and manufacturing, has a rich industrial history dating back to the 18th century. However, recently, it has been labeled as the UK's poorest city, with its residents having less disposable income than those in any other UK city. Despite its resilient, innovative, and adaptable business history, Nottingham has failed to reinvent itself to create new quality opportunities or jobs that are not dependent on higher education, ultimately resulting in economic hardship and job losses. This has left many people, particularly those in poorer communities, unemployed. The city's younger generations are also facing challenges like no earning or low wages, alcohol and drug addiction. While the misuse of opiate and cocaine is at its peak in city, Nottingham has witnessed highest rates of alcohol-related deaths and hospital admissions in East Midlands. A report estimates that there are nearly 12,000 students using substances. A cherry on top, Nottingham has the third highest teenage pregnancy rate of all major UK cities. Teenage pregnancy and drug or alcohol addiction in youth will have negative economic and social consequences for youth and their families, which can perpetuate cycles of poverty and deprivation. Despite these harsh realities, the Nottingham City Council has been accused of ignoring the city's problems. In fact, Council believes that the data paints a skewed picture, otherwise, it's not that worse. The cost of living crisis has also worsened in Nottingham, with low levels of disposable income, leaving residents vulnerable to inflation and rising bills and food prices. Furthermore, while there are great economic opportunities in the city, such as the NG2 Business Park and BioCity, these are not accessible to local residents in the most deprived communities due to a lack of education qualifications. It is undeniable that there are large numbers of people in Nottingham City who are struggling to make ends meet, with child poverty reaching 35.2% and the overall poverty rate remaining at 27.8% in 2019 to 2020. Unless urgent action is taken to address these issues, Nottingham's negative titles, including the UK's lowest disposable income, highest poverty level, most deprived areas, highest teenage pregnancy rate, and highest rates of drugs and alcohol-related deaths and hospital admissions in region, will continue to hold. Thanks for visiting our channel. 
We invest considerable effort and dedication in researching, producing, and presenting content that we believe you'll love. Kindly consider subscribing to our channel to receive early access to our newest videos and updates, and to support us in creating even more exceptional content for you.